something complicated emerges out of that, as if this isn't complicated enough. It's, <laughs> there's this, so one of Jung's critiques of Protestantism was that the critique of Catholicism is that it might fall prey to the authoritarianism that's in some sense implicit in the Roman-like structure of the church and the hierarchy that's there. But his critique of Protestantism, the danger there was that everyone would become their own church and then their identity would become self-proclaimed in some fundamental sense because with no mediating structures between the divine and the person, it's easy for the person in some sense to usurp the position of God. And one of the things that puzzled me about the recent insistence that people can self-define their own existence is that they're attributing to themselves in some real sense the omniscience, omnipotence, right. and uh, omnipresence of God because their stance is something like, I am that I am. Yeah, that's why it's pride. Yeah, right, right, right. And, and, and I, I really see those things as tightly linked. It's one of the things that's tilted me, I would say, ethically in a more conservative direction because even in the psychotherapeutic literature, you see this Rousseau-like underpinning, which more or less assumes that sanity is part and parcel of the autonomous individual. And so there's, there's a Rousseauian element there, there's a Protestant element, and a l classic liberal element. And I fall and pray to that to some degree by thinking of the sovereign individual as the fundamental unit of, of value. And, but then, I, I, and this is partly under the influence of Piaget and, and the theorists of play and the people who made the case that identity comes out of negotiation, that in order to be sane, which is something other than, let's say, self-actualized in the, in the narrow sense, you have to be positioned in these hierarchical structures. So you can't be sane without a partner, without a long-term partner, let's say. Or if you don't have a long-term partner, you better have some children or some parents. And if you don't have them, you better have some friends. And if you don't have them, you better at least have some colleagues and a town and a city and a state and a country all the way up the hierarchy. And that what the sanity then becomes is the symphony-like ordering of that entire structure rather than the autonomous health of the autonomous psyche self-defined also conjuring up the notion that all of that embeddedness is nothing but an imposition in the manifestation of your autonomous self, which is also something that Rousseau would tilt towards, right? But, well, but Jordan, that doesn't come from Protestantism. That goes right back to the early temptation. You shall be as God. Mm -hmm. Now, Protestantism certainly reinforces one extreme. You're right about that. You think, say, of Heine's famous description of Marx, you are a godless self-god. Mm -hmm. yeah, right, yeah, right, 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 because yeah. that's the alternative. Well, that's a scare, that's a very frightening thing if it's real. And the lack of embedding is what is ripe for manipulation, mm -hmm. right? Because you can move, you can move, this is what we're seeing with sort of, you know, mob-like mentality throughout the culture across the spectrum because you can move people like a school of fish because right. they're not embedded in something. And that's right, the tech right. in